In this video, we will cover some basic page setup and printing options, which will be helpful for you, when you consider printing an Excel worksheet, especially the larger ones. Let's learn some basic concepts of page setup and print previewing. When you start working on a new worksheet or, open a saved workbook, you might not know that either the entire contents of your worksheet, in width particularly, are getting fit on a single page or not, because you never have an idea, where the first page of your worksheet is ending, and new one is beginning, because the entire worksheet seems a single page. Even though the entire worksheet is a single sheet, but not when you consider printing it. So the first thing you might always consider before start working on an Excel worksheet is, setting up the page. For instance, I add another worksheet in this order summary workbook, and I have no idea whatsoever that, where my first page is ending, either in width or height. Like either my page width is up to column J or, column M, and the same goes with the height. There is no indication that how many rows are available for my first page, and from where the second page is being started. So, what you can do to get an exact idea of the page dimensions. The easiest and simplest method of this is to, see print preview right away when you create a new worksheet or open an older one. As for this blank worksheet, I click on file menu, and then click on print. On the right side pane, you can see a message stating, we didn't find anything to print, or in older versions of Excel, you might see a dialog box stating, Microsoft Excel didn't find anything to print. As I already knew that this is a new blank worksheet, then why would I will try to see a print preview? Because this is a quickest method of knowing your page dimensions. As I go back to my worksheet, you can see a dotted line between the column, I and J. The dotted line is indicating that your first page is ending here widthwise, and if you scroll down and look over, then you can see another dotted line between the row number 53 and 54. It is where my first page is ending height-wise. So in my opinion, this is the quickest method, and that is what I always use while start working in a new Excel worksheet, or when I need to see the page dimensions of an older worksheet. I prefer pressing Ctrl plus F2 key as a shortcut to print preview command, or you can also add a print preview button to your quick access toolbar. You can also watch our previous video about introduction to Excel interface, for more detail explanation about customizing quick access toolbar. But you might be thinking that how Excel decides, where to put those dotted lines. This actually depends on the default paper size, margins, and orientation settings, and those default settings are gathered by Excel from your printer settings. We recently had published a video regarding setting up your default printer settings, that you can watch for brief reference. So if I click on Page Layout tab Form the Ribbon, here you can see and configure various page and printer settings. For instance, if I click on Size drop-down button, you can notice here that the default paper size is letter. So when I press the print preview button, Excel checks which paper size has been used, and according to your paper size and dimensions the dotted line are drawn. Do note that, you must configure the same paper size in the application that you are going to use in the printer itself. If I choose before as the paper size, then I will make sure that the same before size paper is available in printer tray, and as I choose the new paper size, you can see that dotted line has moved according to the paper dimensions. The margins and paper orientation also affect that how your worksheet will be viewed and printed. For instance, in this orders worksheet, I choose the paper size A4, and you can see the dotted lines right away, and when I got to margins drop down, the margins have been set to wide where Excel is leaving almost one inch blank from all the four side of the paper, and if I print this worksheet, then I will actually have a print where all the four sides of the paper will have one inch blank space, and that you can also see right in the print preview. If I change the margins from wide to narrow, you can see the dotted lines has moved a bit further on the page, and in the print preview window, you can see the blank area from the left and right side of the page has dramatically reduced. 
so setting up the right paper size and margins can help you to properly organize the contents over the sheet, and you may have prior idea that where your sheet is ending, and do you need to change the margins, or reduce the font size, so the contents may not go out of the page. As you can see that three columns are still going outside from the page width, and if I see the print preview, I can imagine that how these pages are going to print. From a total of 18 pages, 9 pages are of those 3 columns only. What I want is to adjust these 3 columns on a single page alone. In Microsoft Excel, there are various methods to cover contents over the page, but a few of them are sometimes totally ignored by the users. For this particular sheet, I can easily cover all the contents on a single page just by changing the page orientation from portrait to landscape. Where page dimensions will rotate, the page width will become page height, and page height will change to page width. This is the most common method to adjust content over the page, when you have several columns to settle. But this will also increase the total numbers of pages, like where all the contents of this sheet could adjust into 9 pages, are now covering 14 pages. So we will see some more options from where you can adjust the contents without changing the page orientation. For instance, the order quantity and product container columns. If I scroll down to the bottom, you can see that the column headings are unnecessarily covering larger width than the actual contents in these columns. So what I can do here is, I can wrap the headings down by using the wrap text command from the home tab, and shift the second part of the headings down by adjusting column width while increasing the row height, and even shorten the heading. You can see that this doesn't made any major label effect, but you can still consider this option, as sometimes a little bit contents may be getting outside of the page. In the region column, Northwest Territories is covering the vast space. So what I do here is, I select the entire column and apply wrap text, then reduce the column size. But the problem here now is that the contents are hiding beneath the row height. So to adjust all the rows at once, while the column being selected, I click the Format button from the Cells section under Home tab, and then click Auto Fit Row Height, and in an instance, everything is in place now. This really has made some significant change, but still two columns are outside the page area. The sales column also unnecessarily covering up a little space by showing more than two decimal points, which I don't want. So I select the entire column and change the decimal point to two points, by applying comma style from number group in home tab. The last option that I can apply on this sheet is reducing the font size. To do this, I select the entire worksheet by clicking on the upper left corner button and then change the font size from 11 to 8. As every column now has some extra blank space that I can reduce, but instead of adjusting each column width manually, what I does is to use the auto fit column width command from the format drop down, and here it goes. There are still other methods that can be used to quickly done the job, I will cover them in my next video, but what important here in this video is to learn the simple techniques that you can apply almost on every worksheet. In our next video, we will be covering page break preview and shrink to fit options of Excel, which ultimately be doing the same thing automatically that we have learned in this video, but you may now have a better idea that how things go around. So, hope you will found this video interesting and useful. If so, then don't forget to hit the like button and do share this video with your friends. Subscribe to our channel for more upcoming tutorial videos. Thanks for watching, and take care.